Hi, I'm Dr. Samantha. I'm a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner with over 13 years nursing experience, working in mother baby postpartum, NICU antepartum and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC. I'm perinatal mental health certified and maternal newborn nursing certified. Sickle cell disease is a very serious medical condition afflicting millions of women. Today we will be explaining everything you need to know about sickle cell disease and the serious effects it can have for you and your baby. So click those like and subscribe buttons and stay with us. Is sickle cell disease a high risk pregnancy? Yes, in fact, it's a very high risk pregnancy according to many studies. This is because sickle cell disease changes the shape of your red blood cells from a normal circular cell to a C-shaped cell. This means those blood cells cannot carry oxygen as easily. They also clump together, which causes pain and blocks blood vessels. This can affect how much oxygen you receive, which can cause organ damage, and how much oxygen your baby receives, which can cause serious issues during your pregnancy. What are the risks of sickle cell disease in pregnancy for mom? For starters, you're at a higher risk for infections, including urinary tract infections, kidney infections, and lung infections. Gallbladder issues can arise, including the development of gallstones, which may require emergency surgery. Heart enlargement and heart failure can happen due to anemia. The anemia is caused by having a lack of healthy red blood cells because, again, sickle cell disease involves altered red blood cells that actually are in the same shape of a C. Finally, sickle cell disease carries some very serious risks, including the risk of miscarriage, the development of preeclampsia, which is a life-threatening condition for mom, and even maternal death. What are the risks of sickle cell disease in pregnancy for my baby? For starters, the most serious risk is severe anemia. If mom is anemic, this means she doesn't have enough red blood cells to support proper oxygenation. This also translates to baby as there's not enough red blood cells and oxygen going through the placenta. This leads to poor fetal growth and your baby can end up being low birth weight, which is less than five and a half pounds. It can also cause preterm birth prior to 37 weeks, which can cause lifelong complications in your baby. Finally, there's a high risk of having a stillborn or a newborn death after having a pregnancy with sickle cell disease. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons so you can get our latest content. How do you deal with sickle cell crisis during pregnancy? Well, it's usually managed in the hospital setting. For starters, we give you blood transfusions, and the idea is to replace your damaged red blood cells with fresh, whole red blood cells. This is gonna help increase oxygenation. We're also gonna give you IV fluids, and we're gonna give you oxygen through a nasal cannula or a mask. This is to help improve oxygen to you and your baby. As I've said before, sickle cell disease and sickle cell crisis can cause extreme pain. So we're gonna give you medications like NSAIDs and opiates to help treat that. And finally, we're gonna give you steroids, prednisone, dexamethasone, or methylprednisone. These hold two benefits. Steroids for you help reduce inflammation to help treat the sickle cell crisis and help it end faster. For your baby, steroid treatment can help to mature the lungs and help baby grow a little bit bigger in case we need to have an emergency delivery. What do I look for prenatally when I'm pregnant with sickle cell disease? The most important thing to determine is if your baby also has sickle cell disease. So for starters, you and your partner want to go to your healthcare provider and have your partner tested to see if they hold sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease. This will determine your baby's risks for developing full-fledged sickle cell disease. Your baby then can be tested via two methods. Chorionic villus sampling, which is taking a tiny piece of the tissue from the placenta between 10 and 13 weeks, 
or amniocentesis, which is taking a tiny bit of amniotic fluid between 15 and 20 weeks. This is tested for sickle cell disease. If it is determined that your baby does have sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease, you can prepare while you are pregnant for post-birth care for your baby. How do I manage sickle cell disease during my pregnancy and prevent complications? For starters, you need to try to relax. Relaxation is great for our health and the health of our bodies. Drink lots of fluids and avoid dehydration. This can increase your risk of clumping cells if you're not hydrated enough. Avoid extreme temperatures and avoid high altitudes, but don't worry, you can still take plane rides because those are pressurized, but you don't wanna be climbing any mountains. High altitudes reduce the amount of oxygen you can take in and this can cause a sickle cell crisis. You will want to avoid any strenuous exercise where you are out of breath, but you still wanna do mild exercise such as walking. And finally, make sure you're avoiding alcohol and smoking. I hope this video has helped you learn everything you need to know about sickle cell disease during pregnancy and how to manage it. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button so you can get our latest information on pregnancy, labor, and early childhood parenting. Share this video with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.